for our next landscape in the box, we are going to North America and one of the most famous physical features there. Juliet, over to you. Um, I made the Niagara Falls. They are in America and Canada. I chose this place because I find the Niagara Falls amazing. I like how they fall down in a very straight line. I, I have never been there, but I really want to visit them. I made a boat because they have boats which go really close to the falls. Um, I put humans in it because there's a lot of tourism. Wow, fantastic. You can see there, indeed. We've got the people looking over. We've got the people in the boat and the Maid of the Mist. What are these things down here to make the... Um, I, they're kind of like pebbles. They're stone, stones, yeah. I think you've done an absolutely wonderful job. You've encapsulated the falls really well. Juliet, that is a fantastic landscape. Okay. We're now heading across to Africa and in particular Egypt. Douglas is going to be your guide and explaining his landscape in a box. Over to you, Douglas. This place is the Pyramids of Giza. It's right next to Creo in Egypt. The Egyptians made them in about 2,589 BC to 2,610 BC. All the pyramids are all tombs and made by three different pharaohs. The man-made features are only the pyramids and the physical features are the pyramids and sand dunes. I have never been there, but I was like to sometime in my, go there sometimes in my life. I made them out of clay, then painted the clay, but overnight the clay started to rip, so now it looks like Mars. <laughs> I think it's very nice that it shows the very, very dry landscape that, that exists there, but I think it gives it a little bit of extra authenticity. Douglas, that was a really great effort as a landscape in a box. Great narration. Okay, wow. We're going a little bit further south from Toulouse here, heading across the border into Spain. Carlos, over to you to explain your rather wonderful looking landscape in a box. This place is the aqueduct of Segovia in Spain. It's a, a Roman aqueduct. It's made with stone, but I made with cardboard. Behind the aqueduct, I made some houses and a, a restaurant. Mm. I visit and I really like it that. That's why I made the aqueduct. And so this place in Spain is just here, just northwest of Madrid. Have you been before? Yeah. When did you go? Uh, I can't remember. It was good though. I think that is absolutely fantastic. And this is a, a roundabout for the cars? Wow. That is incredible. That reminds me a little bit of the model of Venice that somebody did in the other school. Absolutely wonderful. Very well done on all your efforts. I'm sure there's going to be some very impressed visitors looking at this when they come to our school. For our next landscape in the box, we're heading to the south coast of England to a small but historical town called Hastings. I'm going to hand over to Stefan to explain a little bit more about his rather amazing landscape in the box. Well, I chose Hastings because it has many historical fe um, features and also um, it's by the sea, so I could be more creative with it. Excellent. It has, um, it has, what's it called? Um, I made it using cotton for the um, sea. Um, we, with um, paint splashed all over it, and with little bits of uh, polystyrene squares. And for the sides, I just did well. Painted it blue and stuck some polystyrene bits on. I made the background um, on my computer using um, sticking just tons of photos on it. This little stick, uh, the little man who has very strange features, I just cut out and. Um, Stuck. Uh, What's that on his head? Uh, it's just a small cross that I have as last phrases. The sea is um, polystyrene bits, just like. No, the sand is the polystyrene bits, like the sea. And. Could you just explain what that photo is there? That looks very dramatic. Um, well, that's a photo of a. Um, here? 
here that burnt down in Hastings, as you can see it here too. Oh my goodness. It's very, um, it's been trying to go under construction okay. for a long time. Well, I think that's absolutely fabulous. You've got soldiers, you've got burning piers, you've got choppy seas, you've got beaches, you've got the lot. What a fantastic landscape in a box. In a box. We are going to South America. I'm going to hand over to Ben to reveal all and explain a bit about his landscape in a box. This is the Bolivian Highway of Death and it's the most dangerous road in the world. Um, some physical attributes here are the um, boulder that has fallen off hmm. and the, there's a broken bridge since it's almost constantly being repaired because villagers nearby use it to trade. And here are some sort of graves where people have plunged off the edge to their doom. And here's a little lake. And yes. How many people meet their end on this place every year? Um, I think... A lot or just a few? Quite a lot. Would Since you would you go there? No. No? I know some people go mountain biking there. Wouldn't be for you. No. Alright, thank you very much. Ben and his landscape in a box, the highway of death in Bolivia. Lid back on. Here we go. All the way across to North America to our next rather impressive landscape in a box. I'm gonna hand over to Maria to explain exactly what's going on. I chose to do the Hewasepi Mooney Falls in the Grand Canyon. It is in the northwest corner of Arizona, close to the borders of Utah and Nevada. I chose this place because I think it is, a very, it is very impressive, and I am going to go there soon. The physical features are the mountains and rivers because they are formed naturally. I added some environmental features like the tree stumps because people are cutting down trees, even in spectacular places. That is fab. Have you been here before to this place? No. Would you want to go? Yeah. Oh, let's hope you get to go. I think that's absolutely wonderful. Fantastic. It's a great effort, very impressive, and I hope you can see on camera just how great this looks in real life. I have a feeling this is going to be staying in my classroom for quite some time. Well done, Maria, and thank you very much. To South America now, and more specifically to Brazil, to one of their most beautiful cities, and Tom is going to explain his landscape in a box. Over to you, Tom. Okay, uh, this is Christ the Redeemer in Rio de, ne Rio de Nezuro, and I chose this landscape because I'd love to go there and see this statue. Uh, the statue is 39.6 metres tall, and it's the fifth largest statue of Christ in the world. I made the main statue of clay and um, paint. I made the restaurant at the front with plasticine and cocktail umbrellas. Also, I made a little tourist taking pictures at the front. Uh, I made him with the scene. Um, and then I just painted the hill with paint as well. Have you been there before, Thomas? Uh, no, and it's one of the places that I'd really want to go to. So it's on your tick list of places to go and see? Yeah. Thomas, that is brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. For this landscape in the box, we are going all the way down to Australasia. Tom, would you like to unveil what it is we've got? Well, Wonderful. my landscape in a box is Uluru, also known as Air, Air's Rock. This is in the desert part of Australia. It is really hot and dry. I made my Uluru out of polystyrene and I painted the sky blue and the floor orangey gold to, resp to resp represent the sand and desert. I tried to get the colour of my Uluru as close as I could to the actual thing. To get this colour, I got red and yellow and mixed them together to make a reddy orange colour. I got the polystyrene from my garage and I then carved it with a knife to create a curved shape. I only did part of it, the other part extends outside the box. That's absolutely fabulous. Have you been to this place before? No. Would you like to go? Yes. Let's hope you get there one day. Tom, it's been a surprise. This is Eric's landscape in a box. I've not seen this yet. Eric, can you unveil and then explain what this could be? Wow. Go for it. Um, my landscape in a box is the needles on the Isle of Wight near England. Um, I've been there and seen them myself. And I also have a jar of the unique coloured sands on the cliff next to them. Um, they've been used in plenty of films and they're well known and famous. 
the lighthouse is out of use but still looks nice in the landscape and I'd like to go there again sometime, there's lots to do. Fantastic. So you have been there once before? Yeah. Excellent. How did you go about making the lighthouse? Can you just explain very quickly? Well, the cardboard was quite easy to fold into a cylinder, so I just did that and then coloured it in. That's an incredibly effective landscape in a box. I absolutely love it. Eric, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Now, and more specifically to Morocco, where Izzy is going to tell us a little more about her landscape in a box. So over to you, Izzy. So I made the Uzud Falls in Morocco, North Africa. The reason I chose this landscape is because I really like waterfalls and I've never been to Morocco. So because there was a waterfall in Morocco, I chose it. Obviously there is a waterfall and there are trees and a lake and I have a few flowers. I made the base out of recycled, recycled bottles and then put the paper mache on top. Then I just painted everything and added sand to the bottom. Have you been to this place before? No. It looks absolutely wonderful. You've done a fantastic job. It certainly makes me want to go and want to look out for for the future because we're planning a trip there soon. Well done, Izzy. Thank you very much. Escaping the box. We're again heading south all the way down to Antarctica. I'm going to hand over to Camille to explain what's going on. Um, so I made the sand pole because I knew that, would, that it would include lots of wildlife. Um, so there I have like an ice cap and a small river that is unfrozen. Uh, and um, I've got lots of wildlife, they're having a bit of trouble standing up. But um, so we have polar bears, penguins, seals, uh, arctic foxes, and two prehistoric visitors. Um, penguins don't seem to like uh, one of them, so they're all jumping off the cliff. <laughs> uh, obviously, I haven't been here and I wouldn't like to. Okay, now I'm sure on this you've made an, a deliberate mistake on your animals. Would you like to reveal what that is or would you like the viewers of this to guess what it could be? Um, well, they're all together. They're all together. Okay, so what we'll say is we won't mention anything else, but if you've spotted Camille's deliberate mistake on this, okay, then please do send us a comment and tell us what you think it is. Camille, that is absolutely wonderful. And on this landscape in a box, we're going to Antarctica and I'm gonna hand over to Scott. Yeah, um, I was originally going to do Mount Everest, but when I changed school, I'd have those little uh, white bits of paper. So I figured, why not do Antarctica again, you know. Uh, I chose Antarctica because it is the only place in the world where few humans live, and therefore the environment has not been destroyed by human occupation. On the side of the box, I, uh, on the side of the box, I put Ooh. pictures of the aurora because they are not just in Finland and in Sweden, but in Antarctica as well. They are also known as the, so the Aurora Australis, or the Aurora South, the South Aurora. And known as Aurora. I added, um, you can see uh, minerals that I did. Uh, they are called selenite. Uh, and I use selenite to get the effect of ice shelves and also ridges and there. And that's it. Would you ever like to go to Antarctica? No, I've never been. I, I would like to go to Antarctica. And before you go, uh, these are meant to represent base camps for the for the guys who who work there. So what could they possibly be doing that we looked at earlier this year? They could they be doing. What uh, are they drilling down to find? To find Lake Ellsworth. Ah, there we go, we Scott. It's been an absolute pleasure. Awesome. What a fantastic in the box. We are going all the way over to the Caribbean. I'm going to hand over to Tanya to tell you a little bit more. So my landscape is Guadeloupe. I chose it because I like going to the beach. Um, the humid features are the sun umbrellas, the towels and the persons. And the environmental features are the trees, the sand, the sea and the crabs. And at the back the there's the shadow of palm trees. That's it. Have you been to this place before? Yeah. How many times? Once. How long did you stay for? Um, maybe one or two weeks. And what was the best thing about the whole holiday? Um, well, I don't really remember. Did you go in the sea swimming? Yeah. It's warm, isn't it, all yes. the time? It's fantastic it's and very, very humid too. I think that's an absolutely wonderful photo. I've been to Guadeloupe once as well. It's a beautiful place. 
very tropical and this makes me want to go back even more. Tanya. To kill landscape in a box, we are heading across to South America again and Ethan is going to explain what is going on. Um, this is Ven this is Angel Falls in Venezuela and um, I chose this because Angel Falls uh, are on the tabletop mountains which are very strange, they're very squared and and they don't look very natural at all, which is why I chose them. What's so special about Angel Falls? Um, it's just the landscape they're in, I think. Okay. In fact, and they're very high. And um, people also do uh, sports on them. What on earth, what sport could you do on a waterfall? Um, base jumping. Base jumping? What on earth is that? It's basically where you jump, jump off the edge of the cliff. What, you stand here yes. and jump off? And how's that a sport? Surely you die? No, you have a uh, thing that stops you from dying. Which is called a what? A parachute. Oh, good. So it's actually, yeah, there's a, there's a good chance of surviving that particular sport then. Yeah. Wicked. And why did you choose that area? Uh, because, well, I've seen it in a couple of movies and I've always thought it's a bit strange. And I, and I wanted to do it because I thought it would be quite easy to do. With okay. the squareness of the mountains. Have you watched anyone base jumping off it on YouTube? Yeah, quite a lot of people. Scary stuff, eh? Yeah. Ethan, it's been across to the continent of Africa this time with our year seven, Adash. Over to you, Adash. So this is Matakai Airstrip in Lesotho, which is located in the mountain range around the area. Now there's little flat space around there, so it had to be built on the edge of a cliff. Oh, I see. The thing is, this airport, this airstrip is, mu is mu too short for most pilots to take off. So most pilots, uh, they they drive off the edge of the, they drive off the edge of the off the edge of a cliff and then take flight during a drop, mm. steep bank to avoid the cliff. You're kidding. No. It's true. So. How so did you go about making this then? Well, mostly I I carved this this block was made out of polystyrene, which is then carved to look like a cliff, uh -huh. painted, uh, which was the same for this. This part. And the, the reason the airstrip is uh, brown because it's mostly a dirt track, not really a proper airstrip. So. Uh, and um, so, what type of planes take off from here? Then I presume it's not um, kind of it's commercial not, airliners. It's not really a commercial airport. It doesn't have many. It's mostly a uh, little prop engine aircraft, so, and very rarely a small jet engine. Not, not a very tourist attraction. Really. Well, I just hope in my life to I never have to fly into this particular airport, and if I do that, I'm fast asleep. <laughs> Adash, that is absolutely wonderful. Landscape in the box. We're heading over to Asia again, and more specifically, I think, to China. Anyway, over to George. This is his piece of work. Well, in my landscape in the box, there's no human features, as it is a national park. It's all features are physical. I made the mountains out of green card and the waterfall, waterfalls out of blue card. At the bottom of all the waterfalls is cotton wool to get the impression of water splashed. The clouds are made of cotton wool and are surrounded by blue paint for sky. One of the waterfalls is hiding behind the mountain, just there. Oh, got it in the corner. Yes. That's my landscape in the box. Have you been to this place before? No, I've never been here. Would you like to go? Yeah, it'll be interesting. Fingers crossed for the future. Thank you very much.